every single thing that we want is available to us. It already exists in the quantum field where there is no time, there is no space, there is no constraints. It's like when we decide we want something, it's sitting there. And yeah. our job is just to become that version of ourselves that is a vibrational match for that. We are energetic beings, so we're always, you know, emitting a frequency and our desires have a certain frequency so it's yeah. about like aligning with that and allowing it to show up in this reality for us so Amazing. the things that yeah that don't trigger too many of our stories that we don't have resistance they show up yeah. so fast hey guys welcome to the happy way podcast your go-to place for all things fun happiness well-being growth trust and diversity i am your host melissa fideli and i am here to inspire and connect everyone who chooses health and happiness so you can be your healthiest self and live life the happy way. Hello, lovely people. Welcome back to another episode. Today's episode is going to help you manifest everything your heart desires with ease. The world of manifestation is truly interesting and super powerful. With thought, determination and the right energy, we can manifest more money, love, happiness and success into existence. Today, we have self-love and manifesting alchemist, Cora James on the show to teach us how we can utilize our own magic and create the life of our dreams. So welcome, Cora. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. I'm of so excited. Of course. Yeah, I'm so excited as well. I'm so interested in all of this at the moment and I'm eager to really learn more. So yep. yes, we got to get straight into it. So to start, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey and maybe even some of the results your clients have manifested after they've worked with you? Of course. Yes. So I started on my journey really about five years ago. I'd kind of just spent my whole life feeling like a bit of an outcast and like I didn't fit in or like there had to be more to life. I found it really hard to kind of assimilate and fit in, found it hard to hold down jobs and just was like, is this it? Is this yeah. all that there is to yeah. life? And I suffered quite bad depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. And then when my daughter was born, I just knew that I wanted so much better for her. I knew that I never wanted her to feel the way that I felt or to treat myself the way that I did. And you know, society can be rough for us growing up. Yeah. And, we all tend to come out with these beliefs that we're not good enough or we hold ourselves back or can't do things. And I was just so done with that. I'm like, yeah. no, nah, I need to make sure that she has everything that she needs to just go out and live her best life. And at the time, I didn't even know what that was, but yeah. I was nursing and to be really honest, I hated it. It was one of those things yeah. that I was like, okay, what am I going to do with my life? My parents like nursing, you can go anywhere and yeah. you can get a job and all of that. So I was nursing and she was only four months old when I had to go back. So that was really hard. And this is, I guess, where my first kind of manifestation that I noticed came in. I was like, okay, I just really want to find a way that I can work from home. I had no idea what that looked like. I had no idea about the online world at that time. And then I was on Instagram and I saw a post and it was basically a network marketing recruitment post. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? Like this woman's talking about earning an income from home and around your babies and all of this stuff. And I was obsessed straight yeah. away. I was sold. I knew it was my sign from the universe. Yeah. And I think within about a couple of hours, I had spoken to her, opened my business, signed my first customer wow. with Juice Plus, which was my mother-in-law, bless her. Aww. And from that point forward, I have just been obsessed. It completely shifted my paradigm. Yeah. I had no idea that this kind of world was available to us and that yeah. we could, you know, build businesses and raise our babies and feel better about ourselves and create all of this. And I dived into network marketing. I, like I said, I didn't know anything about it. So I didn't have all the, the stigma that's yeah. around it these days. I just yeah. went all in. And then I made the mistake of talking to people about what I was doing and letting them get in my ear and all of that stuff. So my network marketing days didn't kind of, you know, go yeah. how I thought they would, but they completely put me on the path to where I am today. Yeah. And like I said, shifted my paradigm, allowed me to realize that there is so much more to life and there's nothing wrong with me. This is why I've been feeling this way because, oh my gosh, no wonder I felt like nursing was sucking my soul yeah. out like I just knew it was meant for so much more so yeah. got into network marketing set these new big goals for my life didn't quite get there but during that journey I was started to think how is it that I am showing up every single day taking the same action doing the same thing as all these other women and I'm not getting anywhere and it was so frustrating yeah. and from there I started to learn about manifestation mm -hmm. and subconscious programming and universal laws and all of that kind of thing and basically became a woman obsessed and I've been yeah, deep diving yeah. into it ever since and just learning more and applying more and peeling back the layers and yeah yeah it's been 
like life changing doesn't really doesn't really summarize wow. <laughs> doesn't really do it. Yeah, <laughs> incredible. And from that, from your self journey, you kind of yeah, that's where you created your business, right? Yes. 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 I knew. I was like, what? Like, how the hell do more people not know about this? Yeah. Why are we? Why do we all go through school and we're taught all these things? That, in my opinion, it's like don't use half of it. Yeah. Day. No. Yeah. Half of the stuff <laughs> no. that I learned in school. I'm no. like, this is life changing yeah. stuff. So I just knew that I had to share it with as many people as I could, and I feel like it really helped to connect me with my own sense of purpose as well, yeah. and just. Yeah, gave me that creative outlet and to be able to be a good role model for my kids now and show them that you really can do anything and have everything that you desire and Incredible. feel good in yourself and go out there and chase your dreams. So it's been so amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's so <laughs> exciting. And I love your passion. I'm like, oh my God, I want to learn everything about it. So what is manifesting and what are the basics of manifestation? Yeah. So basically manifestation is a co-creative process where we use our thoughts and our feelings to interact with well, I'm, I'm going to be straight up. I'm not a science girl. I'm okay. a woo-woo girl. So yeah. <laughs> I'll put it woo-woo. But basically, there is this quantum field that scientists don't even truly understand. This great big something, you know, or a universal mm. force that is here to support us that we are constantly interacting with, with our thoughts and our feelings to create experiences in our life. And so what that means is that for so many of us, before we realize that or understand what manifestation is, we're doing this unconsciously. Mm -hmm. And what that looks like is, you know, we come into the world and in the first kind of seven years of our life, we're in a very unconscious state. Our little brains are just watching everything around us and making meanings and we're forming our belief systems which isn't always great because at that age, you know, we might mm. take something as simple as our mom telling us off and make it mean we're not good enough and yeah. I'm disappointing them and all of these kind of things. So you can spend your whole life unconsciously recreating these experiences that reaffirm I'm not good enough or my yeah. needs aren't met. I can't have what I want. So it's such a powerful shift when you realize it can be a bit of a slap in the face when you're like, oh, yeah. crap, Like I've created this life up to this point. But that is the moment that you get to take your power back and realize I can create yeah. anything that I want. So it is, yeah, basically working with the universe to consciously create more of what you want and let go Amazing. of the stuff that you don't. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually telling Rory before I came here, before I was like, we're doing a manifestation episode today. And the weirdest thing happened a few weeks ago. I said, I really wanted a plant. And I kept saying that I really want this specific plant. And then a few days later, I got an email saying, hey, can we send you this plant for free? And I was like, yeah, you can. I was like, oh my God, I manifested something. This is amazing. <laughs> yes. And see, isn't it weird yeah, that the things crazy. that you're not attached to? Yes. Because I didn't really care if I got exactly. it or not. Yeah. It, and it was just, it ended up at my front door. And I'm so like, weird. that's so weird. I'm like, that, that's it. We're doing a manifestation <laughs> I'm episode. I'm yeah. convinced. I got my plant. <laughs> <laughs> it is so true. The things that we're not attached to, they show up so quickly. Wow. And it's, you know, when it comes to manifestation, and we're going to dive into this further yes. in the show, but yeah. it really is. Every single thing that we want is available to us. It already exists in the quantum field where there is no time, there is no space, there is no constraints. It's like when we decide we want something, it's sitting there. And yeah. our job is just to become that version of ourselves that is a vibrational match for that. We are energetic beings. So we're always, you know, emitting a frequency and our desires have a certain frequency. So it's yeah. about like aligning with that and allowing it to show up in this reality for us. So Amazing. the things that, yeah, that don't trigger too many of our stories that we don't have resistance, they show yeah. up so fast. So how do we manifest? What should we be doing? And can you touch on what you call the superficial and fundamental manifesting process? Yes. Okay. So as I said, we're always all manifesting and I think it's about becoming really conscious of ourselves. And I'm going to share with you my four-step process that I have for manifesting specific desires. And then yes, we'll touch please. on the superficial yes. and the foundational stuff. Basically, the very first step, and this is one that, that really trips so many people up because it's so simple, get clear on what you want. Mm -hmm. And do you know how many women that I work with that I ask, what do you really want? And they don't even know yeah. because we get programmed, we set goals based on what we're programmed to believe will make us feel fulfilled by society. And that's why so many women and so many people end up having like midlife crisis or something because yeah. we we strive to achieve these goals that aren't truly what deep down we want. It's yeah. exactly like what happened to me in nursing. If we, if we peel it back, it's like, okay, I wanted something where I could help people. I knew I wanted to help people. Yeah. I want something that I can travel with. I want something that is secure, that I can continue to advance, you know, my financial position in. 
so nursing ticks some of those boxes, but it's like there are all these other ways yeah. to get that. Yeah. So what do you really, really want? Mm. Set that intention. And, you know, kind of coming back to how it works, like I said, I'm not about the science of it. Dr. Joe Dispenza, if you're yes. someone who really wants to get, get into the nitty gritty and understand how it works, he's amazing. They did some studies where they had some matter in these test tubes mm. and they basically got these people, the first people they said they got it to just hold it, um, you know, just with a thought, with an intention of what they want to create. And there was no change. The next time they got them to hold it with a feeling, to activate a feeling, and again, there was no change. Whereas the third test subject, they got them to hold the intention with the feeling and that matter shifted by 25% in one minute. Wow. So it is about combining our thoughts with our feelings, but coming back to the four-step process, just getting off track there. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, getting clear on what you really want, yeah. like really decide how you want your life to look. And I often will break this down. You know, you might have your longer term goals mm. and your shorter term goals. Mm. And I know for so many of us as well, it's like, for example, in business, it's like, okay, I really want, let's say a 20K month. But then there's a part of you, the fear that's like, oh, but that'll probably never yeah. happen. Maybe I'll just like, I'll just aim for one client mm. or whatever. So we, you know, it's really wishy-washy energy. Yeah. And the universe is like, okay, well, what do you want? Do you, want yeah. Yeah. do you want 20K? Do you want yeah. one client? Like yeah. just decide. So set clear intentions. The next step in the process is to clear the resistance. And by resistance, I just mean the stories and the programmings yeah. you've come up with that tell you why you can't have it. If it's not true 100% of the time for 100% of the population, if it's not fact, it is a belief yeah. and it can be changed. You can literally reprogram your mind and choose new beliefs that are supportive mm. of what you want to create. We're only born with two beliefs, which I believe is fear of loud noises and fear of falling. Every wow. single thing else is something that you've chosen and taken on over time. So you can wow. choose to let that go. So your biggest job is to dive in and uncover what reasons do I have for why mm. I can't have my desire. And when you let those go, you allow it to come in. Yeah. So then the third step is taking aligned action. This is one of the big things that I feel in manifestation. People are like, I'm just going to sit here and let the universe, mm. you know, deliver it to me and I'm manifesting. It's like you still got to go out and do shit. Yes. And take some action. Yes. Yes. You can't just sit there. Sit you know, around and wait for your dream life to just pop up around yes, you. Yes, yeah. yes. Which, you know, I did try that for a little while. Yeah, it doesn't work. Damn it. <laughs> yes, and I was like, how is this? What is happening? I'm doing all these rituals that people talk yeah. about on the internet and I'm not getting anywhere and it was so frustrating. But, yeah, you do. And, I mean, you know, doing this work is part of the action. Action, removing your beliefs and those limiting mm -hmm. stories is part of that but then it's actually going out and when I say aligned action I mean like paying attention to your intuition to yeah. inspired hit so coming back to you know for example in your business you're like okay I want to sign a client this week and then you get this inspired idea to maybe do a live video on social yeah. media and then your ego brain will be like oh no nah won't do that. Yeah, like, you can't do that. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. What's the point? It will talk yeah. you out of it. Yeah. So it's like starting to trust yourself more and listening to those intuitive and inspired mm. hits because that is the universe doing its part to help you down that path yeah. to call in your manifestation. So you still need to go out there and take that action. And then it's about surrendering to divine timing. You know, I for me as well, I think when we learn about it and we see these people who are, you know, five or six or 10 steps ahead of us and what they've yeah. achieved and we want that now and we're impatient little humans yes. and we want everything now. And the fourth step is is to enjoy the journey and yeah. to surrender it and to and to build your your belief and your trust, knowing that I've asked for this, I'm doing the work, of course I'm going to get it. Yeah. Like, of course, this has to come. It's the, it's the universal law. But mm -hmm. we get, yeah, we just get so caught up in wanting it now and wanting proof and we find yeah. it hard to trust. So, yeah. yeah, that's kind of my four steps. Get clear on what you want clear the resistance, take some action and then enjoy yourself and know that yeah. it's going to it's gonna come it's when gonna the time's happen. right. Yeah, that's it. And like you said, it's just about trusting and letting go and, yeah, just hoping that it comes, I guess, and believing that it comes, not hoping. Yeah. You've got to believe it, yeah, that it's already yours. So that's what right. is superficial and fundamental manifesting? So this is something that took me quite a while to figure out. As yeah. I mentioned, I kind of, when I learned about it, there is so much information on the internet, so many rituals. There's like a 55-5 yes. oh one God. where you can like write your desire out 55 times for five days and all these weird like wow. sex rituals and just different stuff that I talked to so many girls like, I'm doing all the things, I'm not getting anywhere. And basically these kind of rituals, they're amazing for yeah. helping you to what I call to shift your state, to help you basically feel better because, yeah. you know, as I've said, we attract based on how we feel. So your mm. vibe, it's like, you know, make sure you're, you're really taking care mm. of your vibe. It's important. Yeah. And that's not to say we're not all going to have human emotion and bad yeah. days and bad times. That's fine. Acknowledge that because our emotions are showing us something. They're mm. teaching us something. And that is the thing when you start to manifest, 
basically you set this intention of something you want to create and the universe is like, oh, cool. Well, I'm going to show you every single thing that's in the way of you having that so you can remove it. So, so many people are like, my life is getting worse. Everything's chaotic. Everything's falling apart. I'm like, good. It means that you're making space for your new life to come in. Wow. Your new life is going to cost you your old one. So lean into that resistance. Dive into it. You know, what is it about me that is creating this? Yeah. Why am I going through this experience? What can I learn from this? What do I need to release? So, yeah, letting that go. So coming back to, sorry, I get all excited. Yeah, no, it's great. I love it. I'm like, yes, <laughs> do more. <laughs> so coming back to those, those rituals, they really are to help you on a daily basis to, to feel in alignment. And they're things like visualization or journaling, journaling as if yeah. you've already got your desire. It just helps you to tap into that frequency of mm-hmm. I've already got what I want and I'm celebrating it and it's a yes and you get to feel good and you get yourself in alignment with that. However, these rituals, in my experience, they don't work if you're not doing the fundamental work yeah. to to release you know, childhood traumas. Yeah and limiting beliefs and these parts of us, you know, the fear and fear of rejection, fear of being seen, all of this kind of stuff, because our subconscious mind runs the show 95% of the time. So you think about that. It's only 5% of the day that you're actually consciously aware of what you're thinking and feeling. And when we, when we don't do the work to release these parts of us that tell us we're not enough, that we're unworthy, we're undeserving, well, we can, we, we cannot align mm. with, with these other versions of us that mm. have what we want. So you really have to, to deep dive in. And, you know, it's, this is the kind of way that people are like, oh, I don't really want to be doing this. You know, it can feel heavy. It, it brings mm. up old stuff. But it's important because we are energetic beings. And if you are just so weighed down in crap from your childhood and these old negative emotions, you're constantly putting out the frequency of I'm suffering yeah, and I don't have what I want. So that is the real the real fundamental work is really doing that, that deeper healing yeah. and clearing out your channel so you can be a vibrational match and you can yeah. receive more. And, you know, it's not all heavy all the time. Um, yeah. We're going to talk about tying it in with our monthly cycle because none of yes. us want to do the heavy stuff day yeah. in, day out. Yeah, exactly. It gets really yeah. fun too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, that is kind of the fundamental healing. And then you have the the other ones just to help you on a day-to-day basis to, to shift your state and get excited Amazing. and get in that energy. Yeah. So you do, you know, you can't just kind of be like, ah, the old me's dead. Like you got to do the work. you got to like, you know, heal yourself and yep. nourish your body and and do the things that are going to you know get to those little subconscious areas of your mind that maybe you're suppressing hurtful or painful situations or beliefs yep. that are kind of limiting your potential in life I guess and your manifesting ability as well so massively yeah, yeah. and I mean it's not to be taken lightly like I say like yeah. this is your life you only yeah. have one life and that's, you know, it, it's a big mistake that I see people make is that yeah. they're not prepared to do the work. Mm. You know, I think it's only a very small, about three or four percent of the population only ever actually go after their dreams yeah, wow. and take action on that. And that is tiny. And it's because we have all these parts of us holding us back, mm. telling us these stories for why we can't. And I'm just like, I'm so done with that. Yeah, like, yeah. We no, that not go. for me anymore. Yeah. So we can all move yeah. forward and just raise our vibe together and start to change the world and manifest more of what we want. Amazing. So you really touch on the feminine energy a lot within your business. How can we try manifestation during the st- different stages of our monthly cycles and utilize our feminine energy? Yeah, so this is something that I love that I started to dive into over the kind of the last year that has been such a game changer. Yeah. So I think looking back, I used to be so out of touch with like monthly cycle and be like, why am I such a crazy person? Yeah. And my emotions <laughs> are all over the place and what's wrong with me and made it so wrong. And when we start to understand our monthly cycle, it's such a game changer. You know, we, mm. we, we grow up in such a masculine world, I feel, yeah. where it's like hustle and go and do things all the time. And we're not designed to do that. No. We are designed to have our times when we're on and then slow it down so yeah. we can receive our manifestation. So whether you want to like track your like monthly cycle or you can use the moon as well, you know, to break it down a little bit, like the full moon would be your moon time or the time yeah. that you're on your period. That is the time that naturally you're going to be feeling the most low, maybe yeah. even a little bit depressed. And this yeah. is a good time to go within, to do some of that deeper inner mm-hmm. work and look at what is coming up for me. What is going on for me now? Why am I feeling this way? What mm. am I telling myself? Yeah. And what needs to be released? It's really starting to have a whole new level of self-awareness and to get curious yeah. and always being kind and compassionate because sometimes we can beat ourselves up if oh. you find this belief and you're like, God, why do I still believe that? Yeah. This is so frustrating. Yeah. But having compassion for yourself. And that time it's so important to slow down, give yourself mm. permission 
to slow down because I know for so many of us, we struggle to do that and we're busy and we're juggling kids and business and work yeah. and life and all of that. And we, we make like, we feel guilty about yeah. slowing down for some reason. Like mm. I should be doing more. I hate that word. Should. I know. That word should. It's such a Meg, Meg Farrow yeah. word. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So I say, give yourself as much permission as you can to slow down and rest in that time yeah. because as well, that's when you're most intuitive. I know the old like American Indians back in the day, they used to send the women out of the tribe to be by themselves when they were on their moon time because they would come back with such amazing wisdom and insights. Wow. So we miss so much of that because we don't slow down and we just mm. stay caught up in our head and in the rat race and doing all the things. So when we slow down, you can start to ask for some intuitive guidance and mm. then coming out of that, coming into the next stage, it's really starting to plan. So for the week leading up to ovulation, it's like, okay, what are my intentions for the month? What do I want to achieve? How do I want to feel? It's that time to start to plan and take yeah. some action. And then when we're ovulating, that's naturally when we're like on top of the world yes. and you're ready to put yourself out there and yeah. be seen and make the most of that energy. So do that. Get yeah. yourself out there. Plan to be more social in that time. Plan to do more. If you're in business, don't plan to launch when you're on your period. Yeah. Plan your launches and your things yeah. around when you're ovulating because people feel your energy. Mm -hmm. I've, I've played around with this looking back at, you know, some of my live videos in my groups and where I've had those days like, no, I'm just... I need to show up and I can't yeah. take time off. And I'm like, it is flat. And it doesn't yeah. get the same interaction because your energy, your vibes speak it's louder than there. your words. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that because we are women and within our cycle, our energies are going to ebb and flow so much depending on where we're at within our cycle. You know, we're built, we're built differently. We really are. And our energy is impacted so much. And if we could just become a little bit more in tune with our bodies and listen it would make life so much more easy mm -hmm. and we'd also feel a lot more peace with ourselves because, you know, like you said, you know, you, there's a week where you're really tired and you're like, why, are I t why am I so tired? Like, this is so frustrating. I'm so annoyed with myself. I have all of these things I've got to do. But if you just come back and realise, okay, I'm at this spot in my cycle and my energy is low naturally I'm just going to go with the flow this week and I'm going to treat my body kindly and treat my mind kindly and, yep. you know, learn to adjust, learn to go with the flow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Such a game changer. Yeah, And absolutely. just so foreign for so many yes, of us. Yes, of course. And even, you know, I feel like I, as a nutritionist, I, I understand a lot of that. But I still get in these moments where I'm like, oh, I don't care. Like, I've got to, got to go, 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 got to get all these things done. And then I'm like, why isn't anything working? <laughs> but it's like we need to embrace our feminine energy and Definitely. go with that. So yes. I really love that you've touched on this a lot and kind of related it back to manifestation because it all does go hand in hand. Really, it does. Yeah. Absolutely. It definitely does. And that's the thing. If we're always going and we're always hustling and in the yeah. masculine, and we're not slowing down, well, then mm. you can't receive your desires. Yeah. And, you know, energetically, if you're exhausted, consciously you're saying, I want to grow my business, I want to be more active, I want to do this, but unconsciously your body's like, no, nah, nah. I'm so done. I'm yeah. so, I'm, I have no energetic space to take on anything else. And then, like yeah. you said, you're like, why isn't anything working? Because yes. you're running yourself into the ground. And so that, that next phase, like kind of the week after ovulation, it's a really good time to start to slow down, to start yeah. reflect on what has worked well for me, what hasn't, you know, what can I tweak next? time around what's yeah. starting to come up for me paying it really paying attention to stories mm -hmm. to experiences to events in your life because they're always going to be showing you parts of yourself that are ready to go that are ready yeah. to heal and be released and then you can you know do that as you come back into your period and start to do some of that work so Amazing. like I said it's a good Love way because we don't always want to be doing the heavy stuff no. um, there's, yeah. there's, a, there's a time for it so and I think it's really empowering too I know for myself having a daughter she's only yeah. five but already teaching her you know, because I used to feel so guilty. I'm like, oh, I've just got no energy. Mm. Like, I just want time for myself. And I'd feel really bad about that. And now I actually just set some boundaries and I teach yeah. her that. And I, I tell her this, you know, it's, it's just this time of the month and I just yeah. need some time to myself. And I'm sorry if I'm a bit grumpy. It's not your fault. And yeah. I'm just going to, you know, have some more days to chill. So I think it's, it's good to be able to teach the next Absolutely. generation to do that and yeah. to listen to themselves more and trust themselves more. Yeah. Because I don't think that's something we really got taught when we were young. Absolutely <laughs> <Definitely> not. not. <laughs> so what are some of the most common mistakes people make when it comes to manifesting? I'm getting that doing the work is probably not, is one of them, you know, not doing the deep trauma kind of work. But yeah. what other mistakes do we make? Common mistakes that I see, one of the biggest ones I think is looking at your current 3D reality and making that 
means something about what you're capable of creating in the future. Mm. Or, you know, as Dr. Joe Dispenza speaks about, it's like we we wake up and, you know, maybe we have the best intentions to be more positive and go out there and create things. And then you get up and it's like, I'm in this house and oh, you check your phone or you check your yeah. bank. You know, you get you start to allow yourself to to get triggered by your environment yeah. and it keeps you thinking and feeling the same way that you always have and that's how your brain works as a safety mode it wants mm-hmm. you doing the same thing it doesn't want you doing anything different because primal brain kicks in and like oh we might get killed by a saber-toothed tiger yeah. something, something might happen if we venture yeah. out of our home and venture out of our unknown so one of the biggest mistakes is really just being so caught up in maybe the crap that you're in now and yeah. letting your current reality dictate how you feel and how you think and what you believe is available to you. So it's really about expanding your vision and yeah. being able to train your brain to to think and feel beyond what you mm-hmm. can see because anything really is available to you and your current reality is purely just a reflection of your old beliefs and thoughts and feelings and your moment your point of attraction is right now nothing in your past means anything that you do not make it mean and this is another another mistake I see people make and so many women in business is they beat themselves up or they're still punishing themselves over past mistakes and we have so much guilt and shame and all of this stuff it's like let it go it means nothing it means nothing that you don't give to it it's only because you're feeding the past energy your point of attraction is right now so you can choose for yourself right now to create a new reality and go out there and use some of these things I'm telling you to start to shift it. And, you know, things can take some time. Manifestation, yeah. it's it it's not for the faint hearted. I wouldn't no. say if you're really yeah. wanting to really build an empire for yourself because we get on social media and we see people sharing stuff and we set these sometimes, I hate the word unrealistic, unrealistic mm. because I'm always about being a big dreamer. Yeah. That being said, you know, sometimes it does take a bit of time. It takes a bit of time to uncover what work you need to do and to let things fall into place. So it's about being patient too, really yeah. trusting that it's going to come at the right time. And for me, you know, I look back at when I first launched my business and I had about seven months with no clients. But looking back, I'm like, yeah, but I, I wasn't ready. I thought yeah. I was ready. But if women had come into my world, I would have been like, what am I doing What do them? I do with them? What do I do? Yeah. Yes. How do I help these people? Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So we get frustrated and then we're sitting in this energy of frustration and telling ourselves I should be further along and mm. things aren't working out for me. And while you're telling yourself that, well, you're sending that message to the universe. You're yeah. telling the universe, I should be further along. Nothing's working out for me. So you just keep creating the same yeah. cycle. So it's like, how can you be happy in the now and excited for your future? If you can get hooked into your beautiful, mm-hmm. juicy future yeah. vision, but still be happy where you are, things will move so quickly. And that's why I think it's really important to do the inner work and to yeah. do the superficial, superficial stuff. Because don't get me wrong, you can manifest action-based. Mm-hmm. There are so many people in the world who slay their goals yeah. But they're miserable. Yeah. Because they haven't done the work to support it. Yeah. Or you see so many people who will slay a goal. Um, and I went through this in mm-hmm. my first year in business where it's like big cash months and then nothing. Yeah. Or like building wealth up and then losing it because you're not doing that work to regulate your nervous system to yeah. to feel deeply worthy of the life that you have. So a part of you will push it away. Yeah. It's like seventy five percent of people who win the lottery are broke within yeah. a couple of years. Yeah. So that's kind of some of the biggest mistakes that I make. It's like really you have to allow yourself to dream bigger than what you can see in front of you and know that that is available to you. And love yourself enough to know that you're worthy. Yes, yes. yes. So before we finish today, I really want to ask something that everyone can take away. What are two practices, manifesting practices, that people can, as soon as they finish listening, they can kind of sit down and do you know whether it's journaling or a vision board or anything like what two things would you recommend to someone to do after this episode that they can do to manifest the life that they want honestly I would probably say is to sit down and get clear on what do I want Mm -hmm. what do I want if nothing was wrong what would I want if anything was available to me if no one was going to be upset with me what does my heart truly desire and give yourself permission to to journal on that and yeah. let it all out and i love journaling because when you finish one sentence your brain automatically is going to pull out another and another so it's amazing for you know mm. obviously like the work to do on yourself to release things but also getting clear on what you want and allow yourself to dream and tap into that energy and yeah. get it all down pen to paper is really really powerful and as well when we're writing we're pulling out the energy like we're infusing it in that paper so I don't know what it is but there's something magic about getting pen to paper so get really clear on what you want first of all so that you can start to take the action on that and then what would be the second ritual 
I'm a big visualization girl, but it's going to be playing around and figuring out what you like. So some people hate mm. journaling and I have okay. to say it yeah, took me yeah. a little bit to get into. Yeah. I love visualize, like mm. visualizing and you can do that dr- daydreaming, just being in the yeah. car or whatever, or, you know, just taking some time to allow yourself to be quiet and closing your eyes and visualizing project it out in front of you as if you can see it on a screen. It helps to see two or more people benefiting. That's going to speed yeah. up your manifestation and really tuning into your five senses you know Mm. what can you see what can you touch how do you look in this how do you feel the more that we can tap into that version of us who already has what we want and start to bring it into this reality we can feel into it it's going to collapse that time and arrive sooner for us so choosing a ritual like that or speaking it you know just going on a run speaking as if like oh my god it happened yes I'm so grateful all of that kind of stuff speaking into your reality that's another one so have a play around with journaling or visualizing or speaking to see what helps you to, to activate that energy the most Incredible. I love it. So for anyone that is interested in learning more about manifesting and creating their dream life, where can they find you and what can you offer them? Yes. So you can find me over on Facebook. I have to say, as I said to you. Yeah, you're a Facebook girl. I am a Facebook girl, which I feel like is a bit out of date these days. I know. Anything goes. (laughs) Yeah. Facebook goes for me. I've got my my beautiful girl gang on there, Manifesting Queen. So I can give you the link to that one to jump in. I've got so many free trainings and content in there that you can check out. And then I am going to invite you today for listening to this podcast. If you're listening to this and you're like, oh my gosh, yes, I need this in my life and you're ready. Well, then I'm going to invite you today to to, to book a call with me. I'm going to offer three consults. I take on a few each week and we can basically catch up for a girl chat, bring a cup of coffee, and I'm going to start to give you a vibrational analysis to uncover what it is that's keeping you stuck, why your manifestations aren't coming through, why you still feel so crappy despite all this work yeah. that you've maybe be doing so that we can uncover it and leave you with a really clear plan moving forward. Incredible. We'll put all of this in the show notes so people can easily come and find you and click on your links and, yeah, learn so much more about this incredibly interesting and complex topic. So thank you for everything you've shared today. I feel like I was on the edge of my seat, like, (laughs) yes, give me more. It's so good. (laughs) You're so welcome. Uh, And I know you did ask about some of my clients and I got so excited talking. I kind of didn't even say and it's so amazing. It's so funny, you know, like even when I started this, I had so much belief in in this work, even before mm. I'd seen big things manifest into my reality. And so people feel that. And obviously that's yeah. what I started my business with. But even doing it, some of my clients, their results honestly blow my mind. Like okay. some of them recently, I tell I tell my partner and he's like, what the hell? Like, yeah. why is things moving so quickly for them? What are you doing? Wow. So I had like one of my beautiful clients, T, she came to me and she wanted to start a business. She knew she was meant for so much more and she was just so done with doubting herself. Mm. She had a big sisterhood wound where she'd been, you know, bullied growing up and had really low self-esteem and all of this stuff. And we worked together for 12 weeks. And she honestly was like a brand new woman. She was sitting in a whole new frequency. She released so much stuff. She signed her first high ticket client. She's been selling out women's circles. Her goal was to manifest 100K. And even I was like, okay, girlfriend. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) She got gifted $60,000. Wow. unexpectedly from her like father-in-law who sold some property who wanted to help them out and get this her it was so it was so crazy it blew my mind she started to get more visible obviously yeah. with the work we were doing she started mm. doing live videos showing up her partner's boss who she was facebook friends with was so inspired by her work that he left and her partner went for the promotion <laughs> so he got a pay rise as well she manifested him like this whole new job they got sixty thousand dollars cash she's selling out women's circles wow. and just living her best life oh my god <laughs> and that was in 12 weeks That's it's incredible. just things move fast when you're in alignment things move so so yeah. quickly and and you know if even for those of you listening even if it's not business related I had another beautiful girl called SC she came to me and, and I feel like this is important to talk about with what we were saying yeah. with setting goals that you're in alignment mm-hmm. with she came to me and she was studying to be a doctor yeah and we started to get really clear on what you actually want with your life and I'm like mm-hmm. okay well is this congruent with you being a doctor and she's yeah. like no, I can see yeah. that being a doctor isn't going to give me any of this life that I want. And we started to work through and build her confidence and release these things. And now she's like going into public speaking, wants to be wow. an energy healer. She's so excited. She started network marketing, doing things on the side. She manifested like three scholarships in oh three months goodness. at her university. She found $50 floating on a pond, got like 
a coffee machine delivered to our house. Okay, then? so moral of the story is we need to come and see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought I would yeah. just drop that in at the end. I love that. We need to come and all book in with you. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much for everything you've shared today. It's been an incredible episode and, yeah, I'm so grateful to have you on. So You're thank so you. so welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. So that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you guys so much for listening and I hope you have taken even just one piece of wisdom from this episode that you can apply to your life to help you grow and be a happier and healthier version of you. Please like, subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts and make sure to share us on your socials. Sending lots of love to you all. Bye. Yay. That was amazing.